Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Bosch Limited Q4 FY21 post result conference call hosted by Batliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anamalai Jairam from Batliwala and Karani Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Malika. Welcome to Bosch 4 fy 2021 4 conference call. From Bosch Management, we have with us today Mr. Samitra Bhattacharya, Managing Director, Mr. S. P. Srinivasan, Chief Financial Officer and Joint Managing Director, Mr. Guru Prasad Mudulapur, Chief Technical Officer, and Mr. Rajesh Parpe, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. I now hand over the call to Mr. Samudra Bhattacharya for the open remarks to be followed by question and answer questions. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Anamalaya Jairaj, and thank you, Malika. Uh, good evening, colleagues, and thank you for being part of this call. I hope you and your family members are keeping safe and healthy during these tough times. I would like to start briefly about the macroeconomic highlights. All of you know that due to the various forms of lockdown in multiple states, and some of the states have even announced a complete lockdown for a few weeks, the Indian economy and the mobility recovery index have fallen to the comparable levels of July. While RBI had forecasted a growth of about 10.5% for FY22, this forecast could be under risk, although the demand is expected to come back once the COVID wave 2 recedes. In this background, the proactive action taken by RBI last week in announcing a series of targeted liquidity as well as regulatory measures will help reduce the stress and the financial sector stability risks in the economy though more measures are going to be needed in the coming months to provide an adequate support to different stakeholders for combating the adverse impact of the second COVID-2019 wave. With this background, let me look into the automotive market development in the quarter. The overall automotive market production increased by 28%, including two-wheeler segment, of course, on a lower base. The heavy commercial segment increased by 92%, again on a lower base. Strong demand can be attributed to the improved consumer sentiments, forming freight rates, as well as higher infrastructure demand. The tractor segment increased by 67%, and tractor demand had continued to remain positive due to a higher rubby output and favorable crop prices. Of course, in the case of tractors also, as I speak with you right now, the rural segment is also under stress. Passenger car segment increased by 25%, aided by preference for personal mobility. Light commercial segment increased by 37%, increased by e-commerce activities and new launches in the sub-segment. And amongst the other market segments, two-wheeler segment increased by 29%. Three-wheeler segment degrew by 16% on a low base already, and recovery in three-wheeler was witnessed only in March 21. Amidst this auto market performance, we now look into the performance of the company for the quarter. The total revenue from operations stood at 32,177 million or 3,218 crores, an increase of 43.8% as compared to the corresponding period of the previous year. Mobility business sector increased by 57% approximately due to factors mentioned earlier. Business beyond mobility solutions have increased by about 30% the domestic sales for this quarter increased by 50% plus. Material cost as a percentage of revenue from operations has increased to 61.4% during the quarter as compared to 53.9% during the corresponding period of the previous year. Material cost percentage on net sales excluding service income and other operating income increased by 4.5% compared to the corresponding period of the previous year. The increase is mainly due to the change in product mix with increased share of traded goods, high cost input materials due to BS6 components, and also higher freight costs. 
The employee cost has declined to 1,351 million in January, March 21, from 2,763 million in the corresponding period last quarter, a decline of 51%. This reduction was mainly due to one time impact of reversal of excess wage settlement provision, reversal of employee retirement liabilities and other savings based on structural measures initiated by the company. Excluding these reversals, the personal sta cost stands at 2,937 million at 9.1% of the sales, which is a 7.2% increase over the previous corresponding quarter. The depreciation charges have declined by 20%, 20.5% during the quarter on account of lower additions during the year of FY 2021 and change in the asset base. Other expenses stood at 4,892 million in January, March 21, as compared to 4,134 million in the corresponding period of the previous year, an increase of 18.3%. The increase is due to higher sales volume and royalty. The increase is partially offset by cost production measures initiated by the company. Operating profit stood at 5,270 million for January to March 21 as compared to 2,256 million in the corresponding period of the previous year, mainly attributed to higher turnover. Other income decreased by 234 million. Other income mainly consists of MTM gain and interest income. This is a decline in the MTM gain on the marketable securities and fall in interest rates during the quarter. For the quarter, January to March 21, the company posted profit before tax of 6,400 million as compared to 3,610 million in January, March 2020, an increase of approximately 77%. Tax expenses for the quarter stood at rupees 1,580 million. The profit after tax stood at rupees 4,820 million or 15% of the total revenue from operations. Now, I would like to give you a synopsis of the annual results of the financial year 2021. The company recorded a total revenue of operations of rupees 97,180 million, which is 9,718 crores, yeah? a decline of 1.3% compared to the last financial year. The mobility business sector increased by 2.4%. Business beyond mobility declined by 11.7%. The material cost as a percentage of total revenue from operations increased by 59. Increased to 59.4% in 2020 stroke 21 from 53.9% in 2019 20. The increase is mainly due to higher freight costs, change in product mix with higher traded goods, higher imports and raw material cost due to BS six components, currency fluctuations, partly offset by cost reduction measures with our suppliers. The employee cost declined by 26.6%. Personal restructuring measures initiated by the company mainly contribute to the reduction, coupled with one-time impact on wage settlement provision reversal. Other expenses increased by 4% mainly due to increase in royalty provisions for new products and mobility solution sector. The company posted a profit before tax. This is, of course, before exceptional item of rupees 1,313,109 million in comparison to 16,364 million for financial year 2019-20. As a percentage of total revenue from operations, it stood at 13.5% in the current year as compared to 16.6% in the previous year. The net profit after tax packed stood at rupees 4,825 as against rupees 7,296 million in 2019-20, showing a decline of approximately 34%. Previous year PAT is before discontinued operations and one-time impact of deferred tax due to change in tax rate. The decline in profit is mainly attributed to higher material cost for the reasons explained above. PAT before exceptional item is 10,390 million, which is a reduction of 19% over the last year. The company also prepared for consolidated statements for the group, which has two subsidiary companies, Micro Trading Private Limited, Robert Bosch India Manufacturing and Technology Private Limited, and an associate company, New Tech Filter India Private Limited, and joint venture, Prebo Automotive Private Limited. The subsidiary company has not commenced its operation, hence there is no material impact on the group's financial statement.
Bosch Group Companies in India has pledged Rs 50 crores for implementing various COVID combat combating community welfare initiatives in the last year. In line with this, we tried to focus on pressing needs of the society in three major areas, including health support, healthcare support, livelihood creation, and distribution of essential supplies to needy communities. Although 2021 started off on a positive note on the economic front, further supported by a growth-oriented budget starting April 2021, India is witnessing an alarming spike in the COVID-19 second wave cases, which is onset, which has set off the second wave on the pandemic. As a company, we remain true to our core values, even in the second wave, the welfare of our employees and people around us is the top priority, other than business continuity. Apart from converting our sports complex into a COVID care center for BBM, donating close to 4 million medical grade masks to frontline workers, frontline government workers and giving free vaccination to all our staff and their dependents. We are also investing in in-house oxygen generating units for business purpose, as well as aid to healthcare infrastructure and hospitals. The Bosch Group strengthens its commitment in fighting COVID-19 wave two pandemic in India. Bosch is equipping the Indian Red Cross in New Delhi with more than 290 medical products worth more than 1 million euro completely free of charge. Bosch is also expanding its vaccination program for all its associates in India and their relatives. About 90% of the associates at Indian manufacturing sites who are above the age of 45 and eligible for vaccine have already been vaccinated against coronavirus. The Indian government has since approved vaccinations for everyone over the age of 18. Bosch India will extend vaccination to all dependent family members of our staff free of cost. Bosch is one of the first companies to avail end-to-end -end insurance cover for COVID-19 treatment with special coverage designed for blue-collar associates, besides white-collar. As part of the immense care and concern, Bosch continues to extend medical insurance coverage for dependents of diseased employee due to COVID-19 for a period of two years from the date of demise. The auto industry is seeing itself on a road of recovery until early this year, and Bosch's limited positive results is a validation to this. However, with the second wave being more severe than the first one, there is clear uncertainty in the market. With 80% of our revenues driven through mobility business, we also have been adversely affected in these months. The supply chain is going through a rough patch due to multiple reasons, whether it is the worldwide semiconductor crisis or the localized lockdowns, oxygen shortage, which is across India, or even workforce unavailability or absenteeism. The challenge will be to manage the fluctuating demand, supply chain crisis, and changing the consumer behavior all at once. Bosch has a long-term strategy to shape the market in key technologies with innovative products and solutions. Bosch Limited continues its stance to be a technology agnostic partner to its customers, government, and all stakeholders. While we have successfully managed to do the transition from BS4 to BS6, the next challenge will be transitioning to TREM4 to TREM5, adoption of CAFE norms, phase two, and BS6, stage two. Amidst the crisis, Bosch in India will continue with its investments, as we have done in the past, in competence development and in addition to solutions designed and developed in India and for India, what we call as affordable and innovative. For all Bosch businesses beyond mobility solutions, the company has a two-pronged approach. On one hand, Bosch continues to bring in fit for the market products and solutions, while on the other hand, the company will increase its go-to-market footprint using both offline and digital platforms. Scaling up e-commerce activities will remain one of the key initiatives in FY2122. To cater to our new age businesses, we have created agile projects both on electrification and on mobility services inside Bosch Limited to understand the local requirements and the use of global expertise to provide localized solutions for the Indian market. These project houses being a step forward towards the future proofing of the company and will need some time to translate into mature business. I would like to thank you for your contribution and for your patient listening throughout this. And I would now like to address your queries. Thank you and your questions, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. One, uh, you alluded in the initial remarks some uh, change in the royalty rate. Uh, would you be able to help us uh, what has been the full year royalty rate and what's the background for the same? Uh, no, I said that uh, there is certain impact based on what we have uh, paid for the royalty yeah so uh, we continue to have uh, extremely uh, you know optimal uh, royalty rates for bosch limited with our parent and which are not even at the uh, you know the standards of uh, not even reaching the median however when we do take technology we sometimes have to pay uh, initial down payment and for the technology that we receive and those payments uh, sometimes in quarters coming. So in summary, A, our royalty rates are far below the median of any uh, like, like industry. B, uh, we uh, uh, at times when we get in technology, we need to pay uh, some royalty based on initial uh, payments. And these are paid over the years. And sometimes this has a small impact on the uh, quarter. Sure, thanks. Second one is with regard to the business opportunity. Uh, you did, uh, during the BS6 transition, you did talk about the new project wins, uh, uh, especially for BS6. Considering now with uh, CAFE and RDA are planned over the next uh, two years, uh, I just want to get your thought in terms of two things. One, uh, is this opportunity uh, bigger than the BS6 in terms of uh, the value addition which you can bring on to table for industry and also what's your uh, win there. And second, uh, looking at the customer profile, uh, would it be in, in your favor to go for diesel or the customers are still uh, sticking with the gasoline engine? Thanks. So Amte, uh, in relation to uh, the first part of the question, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have always said that A, India will predominantly remain a, you know, IC uh, country, unlike other countries which could go anywhere. And, and I've always mentioned before also, and now even strongly stated that uh, it will be 80% plus IC even for 2030. So you had already heard that, you know, uh, we had declared that we had done 127 acquisitions on the BS6. And uh, uh, I remember having told you that pre-COVID levels, that was a total package of 24,000 crores spread over five years. And uh, post-COVID levels, it was a value of 18,000 crores. So let's say now to somewhere in between that. Now those we will execute. And uh, you can see that in the quarter one, that while the market has uh, gone up by 26%, uh, we went up by 44%. And partly it is due to the product mix. Uh, what we will have to carefully do is to see how we not only meet the industry growth levels, but also that we can be better than that based on our content per vehicle. Now, having said that, uh, legislation and implementation of legislation, since you touched about it, uh, is going to be very key. Uh, we have always told the government of India that uh, please have a playing field where the cricket pitch, for example, is not changed while the game is on. That means if legislation has been announced, then those legislation uh, dates and deadlines should be met. And this is not for us. I think it's good for it's a good practice worldwide and it's a good practice also for India where long-term reforms and legislative changes can be uh, accepted as well as uh, can be seen that India is actually walking the talk like it did for BS4 to BS3 to BS4 and BS4 to BS6. 
So that gives you a summary of both the questions you asked. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, my first question pertains to our uh, restructuring uh, uh, exercise, which we have done with now. Uh, in the past year, it indicated about five to six years of payback period. So how should we look at it with respect to in which line items we should see the benefit and uh, uh, when we should see this starting to come from? So Dinesh, uh, I'd mentioned to you that, uh, you know, for the past two years, we have done the three art program well before COVID wave one actually hit us in a very clear way. Uh, and we did uh, redeployment, restructuring, and reskilling. And we have put in approximately both the years of FY 1920 and 2021, approximately 750 crores each. So 1,450, 1,500 crores of which, uh, majority of which was relating to, let's say, uh, uh, EVR, early voluntary retirement, where Bosch has given very, very good packages. Uh, we have reduced uh, in the last two years uh, more than uh, 2,400 associates, uh, but with packages which are excellent and uh, which uh, are the Bosch way. Now, having said that, our headcount is far lower. Uh, the quarter uh, of January, March is a misnomer on the personal cost. So please don't read it as 4.2%. I think you should read it more like where will Bosch uh, Limited go forward? Uh, I would say that earlier, you know, our personal cost was in the region of 13, 14%, and today it will be in the region of, you know, between 10 and 12, more likely towards the 11% mark. So keeping that in mind, I would say that uh, already it has kicked in. Yes, you're right. We had said that the payback would be five years. But uh, as we go forward, you'll see that benefit. And more importantly, we'll also see the productivity benefit. Okay, okay. So you're indicating uh, employee cost uh, normalization to be at 11% level. No, it could even be lower. It could be also 10. But I'm saying, you know, it's a bandwidth. Right, but, right. you know, the bandwidth will give you uh, a several percentage drop on employee cost while it will also improve the productivity. So there are, so, you know, you can't actually look at one element of the PNL or balance sheet. You have to look at several impacts, you know, right. how it improves on productivity. What is your balance sheet impact? What is your PNL impact? So we see several impacts. Understood. Understood. And second question pertains again to uh, extension of that would be with respect to our uh, profitability. So, uh, prior to this uh, down cycle, our margin profile was on an average about 17% beta margin profile. Uh, given the substantial changes in the technology, how should it impact our margin profile? I mean, do we expect it to go back to the past uh, uh, averages? So, Dinesh, uh, as you know, we have repeatedly stated we don't give guidance. But we do share with you what we are doing. I think part of what we are doing is reflected in the January to March results. Having said that, you must accept that we as Bosch, where 80% of our turnover comes from mobility, will have to follow the mobility uh, uh, market. Our intention is to grow profitably and grow at the rate of what the mobility business does. In this case, in last quarter, we uh, overgrew significantly. And uh, as I said, going forward, we want to grow equal to or better yeah, as a growth rate. But our fortunes are greatly, not fully, tied to the mobility business, keeping in mind what is about to now unfold based on COVID wave two. Uh, I can't give you a guidance. The whole industry doesn't know whether industry in FY21-22 will have a four-week impact six-week impact, eight-week, or worst case, even 12-week. So in summary, you are, you are seeing that we have taken hard steps to uh, tighten our PNL and balance sheet with hits 
uh, we are our balance sheet and PNR are clean. Uh, we have a good cash reserve and surplus. We have improved on the cash. Uh, our January to March results have been decent and good. And now we are in the middle of the COVID wave two, which is affecting India, the industry, including the automotive industry. I've got it. Uh, I'll come back and close. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shyam Sundar Sriram from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you uh, for taking the question, sir. Um, uh, very good performance on the revenue front. Uh, it has been uh, for quite following what uh, what you have been saying uh, over the last few quarters in terms of the country. So this is the conference operator. There is a slight disturbance coming from your line. Request you to mute your line after your question so that the management can answer your question, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, sir, uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity. So, my first question is uh, uh, for the full year FY21. Uh, if you can give some uh, perspective on how the gasoline and the, and the diesel uh, portfolio perform uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, that is my first point. And second, I couldn't get the first you... question. Sham, can you repeat your first question, please? There was uh -huh. a break. Yes, your sir. Line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my first question is for FY21. How has the gasoline and the diesel portfolio performed, excluding the two-wheeler segment? If you can uh, comment on the year-on-year -year, uh, performance of the gasoline and the diesel powertrain portfolio. And added to that, you, you have been uh, talking of improving the content per vehicle um, as the regulatory norms keep changing here. Uh, for the MNSCV and the passenger vehicle segment, would it be possible to share how much the average content has increased uh, from BS4 to BS6, any ballpark range would help us understand all the initiatives uh, you've been talking about and, the, and our business then. That's my first question. Thank you, Sham. There still was this uh, uh, disturbance in your line, but I'll try to answer it. So uh, there has been a very strong bounce back in the January, March quarter on all segments. As you know, Bosch Limited has powertrain. Powertrain includes gasoline and diesel. We have had a very significant increase on a low base of the previous quarter, I have to admit, but a very significant improvement, including an improvement on the content per vehicle for our co-business. There has also been a significant improvement in our aftermarket business and our power tools business. So this performance of 44% that you see, Sham, is an all-round performance uh, uh, on uh, powertrain, which has been even better than the 44, uh, with uh, very strong performances on aftermarket as well as on uh, power tools. Those are our three main businesses. Now, uh, diesel and gasoline, we don't give you separate numbers. Uh, we have not that, uh, done that before. Uh, and uh, I can only tell you that uh, you know, uh, our content per vehicle for our core business will continue to be better based on the example that I shared with you on BS4 transitioning to BS6 going forward. Understood, sir. Uh, thank you for that. Sir, my second question is uh, uh, the purchase of finished goods, if you see, uh, in the fourth quarter, it has reached uh, close to 43% of sales, uh, just shy of 50%. Uh, now, after almost one year of BS6 implementation, uh, we see high levels of uh, traded goods within our uh, RM basket per se. Uh, over a period of, so you have always talked about, you know, improving localization after every regulatory change per se. Over two years by FY23, uh, will this finished goods, can it be back to the one third uh, level what, that it was before uh, BS6? Is that something possible or you think as the more and more uh, new, newer regulated norms start uh, coming in, it will be uh, finished goods um, in the, in the, within the RM basket will only continue to increase. If you can comment on that, sir. So there's a lot of echo. Uh, I would request colleagues who are not on mute to kindly mute. Uh, thank you very much. So, Sham, uh, uh, yes, I did mention previously that uh, as we go into BS4 to BS6, there will be, for the initial period, 
uh, till it makes sense to localize uh, that there would be traded uh, content and higher traded content. And uh, based on the higher traded content, you do see uh, the increased material cost. And uh, we have said both the fronts. Uh, colleagues, I would still request you to please kindly all of you mute. Otherwise, there's a still an echo. Thank you. Uh, so we still see uh, that, you know, we will localize and we have a very clear plan of localization. And uh, we are focusing on localization. And that will change our traded goods reduction and improve on our uh, localized percentages. But we will do it in stages. You don't do this overnight. And you don't do it for small volumes where it's counterproductive. So we will do this. So in summary, Sham, uh, you've seen that we have uh, bitten the bullet uh, prior to COVID already in relation to our restructuring that is more or less over. The benefits will come in. Uh, our cost controls have been pretty solid and good. Uh, we are content per vehicle is improving in our core business. Uh, and while trading has in increased, and we accept that, uh, we will localize and we have a very detailed plan for localization. And, and sometimes when you see this technology fees and other things, it's a part of the localization process where we get the technology. Uh, of course, we give to our parent at very, very optimal and uh, rates which are far below the median in the market. Understood, sir. That was very helpful. There is one uh, question on the balance sheet. Our trade tables have sharply increased as at the end of 31st March 21, is there any change in terms of trade? If you can uh, share any perspective on that, sir, I'll stop here. Uh, I will request our CFO to do. I think he has done very good work on the trade payables to bring it to market levels. But uh, uh, Srini, can you take that question, please? Well, there is no underlying change in the credit terms. But what we have done, we have enabled the supplier financing for a lot of our supply base and many of them are small and medium enterprises. So they are able to access uh, better credit rates and we have arranged it for them. And hence the overall credit period to us has gone up. Atta, thank you very much, sir. I'll call back in a Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Shyam. The next question is from the line of Aditya Makaria from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, today uh, there was. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Aditya, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, there were some announcements uh, today, perhaps made by the parent of you know Bosch wanting to get into hydrogen fuels, and also on the electromobility, there were some announcements. I was just wondering uh, where does the India entity fit in the overall scheme of things? And would it be in a Bosch uh, listed uh, if these things were to materialize? Uh, Aditya, we had already mentioned to you and uh, all the rest of your colleagues uh, that uh, India uh, and Bosch Limited uh, created the project house mobility uh, solutions as well as the project house for electrification. In fact, my colleague who is on the call, uh, uh, along with our JMD and CFO, the other colleague is uh, Guru Prasad Madlapur, who has recently taken over the CTO. He heads also the electrification project. So we started this project well in advance inside Bosch Limited, and uh, uh, our parent naturally. Uh, will has done a lot of work over the last 10, 12 years, spending on an average between 400 to 500 million euro every year, and has a lot of acquisitions also, which I shared in the recent press conference. Uh, but we will follow the Indian market. And we have always said that we believe two-wheeler, three-wheeler, uh, ELCV, those are the areas which will come uh, and also, perhaps later hydrogen may come for heavy commercial vehicles. So, uh, Bosch India will follow and do what is necessary. And uh, the 
line for Mr. Bhattacharya is disconnected. Kindly stay on line till I reconnect him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management line reconnected to the call. Thank you and over to you, sir. So basically, Aditya, uh, I think you can hear a couple of sentences also from our CTO on electrification, but we are very much going to participate in India. So over to you, Guru. Uh, Guru. Yeah, thank you, uh, Samitra. I think you covered it all. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, electrification uh, program at uh, Bosch uh, has been quite... Uh, 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 long already, it's uh, over 10 years uh, or more that we have invested in uh, electrification globally. And uh, over the last three years, uh, we've already started to put a lot of focus on electrification out of Bosch India, although the market itself uh, was not really there. So it was more a sensing, understanding the market, uh, trying to do uh, what is right for the market, uh, uh, preparing ourselves to have affordable solutions for the market, lo localize uh, where required, work on uh, technologies which are uh, more suitable for the Indian weather conditions because electrification requires that to uh, really happen. So these are all uh, things we started uh, quite some time ago and we've made a lot of progress there. Uh, we've uh, been working on uh, low voltage stuff. Uh, we've been working on uh, the high voltage stuff. Uh, typically the low voltage stuff is what uh, you would use in uh, two or three wheelers, uh, that's the 48 volt solutions. You would also use the high voltage stuff in passenger cars or uh, commercial vehicles. And of course, uh, potential uh, new technologies like uh, fuel cell electric vehicles would come at uh, some point in the future uh, for heavy commercial vehicles and long haul trucks and uh, uh, buses. So we have, we have a very comprehensive portfolio as Bosch uh, uh, and uh, we are working on uh, multiple options together with our uh, OEMs uh, here. Uh, uh, sure, sir. And uh, just uh, one uh, question, you know, there are a lot of uh, two-wheeler startups in uh, in uh, EVs particularly. So while I do understand that you have mentioned you work with Bajaj and TVS, are you also are you... open to working with these uh, startups? Absolutely. I don't uh, think we differentiate uh, among customers and uh, uh, especially in uh, the field of electrification. We realize that a lot of uh, innovation is coming out of uh, the startup world. So the uh, project house, which uh, our uh, CEO talked about, is also set up like a startup. So we, we recognize uh, the need to do it uh, differently. So we certainly work with uh, startups, and uh, we would be happy to connect with anybody. We already do connect with a lot of them, not just uh, to provide our technology, but also to make use of uh, what is innovative and what's available with them. So it's uh, a two-way traffic uh, for us. Guru, okay. if I may yeah. add to Aditya, that uh, Aditya, you may be aware that we also from Bosch Netherlands invested in Sun Mobility, 26%, uh, and that is a startup. And there are uh, chief technical officers, uh, the single point of contact, as well as on the board. So. Uh, that's a very clear example of also our engagement as minority shareholder. Absolutely. Got it, sir. Nice to know that you're being nimble, you know, even though you're such a big giant. So, uh, congrats and wish you all the best. Sir. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Poddar from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> so just one question. Uh, with electrification as a trend, uh, you know, obviously, uh, whenever it inflects and it comes through, is it fair to say our content per vehicle will be higher or will further accelerate versus what it is today? Pratik, uh, we have to look at in the context that we are talking today. Uh, uh, you will admit and agree that in India, the current state of electrification is at a pretty low level. While there is no doubt that it will come, it will take some time for electrification also to come in, including 
the impact of COVID wave one and wave two. You just heard from our CTO that we are prepared because our parent has been in this business for the last 10, 12 years, and we are prepared to be giving innovative and affordable solutions in defined beds. Yeah. So uh, as we grow into that, uh, it'll evolve. Uh, now, uh, content per vehicle improved on BS4 to BS6 because very clearly in BS6 you need, uh, you know, more content. And Bosch has been one of the companies which has given holistic solutions to all our acquisitions. So uh, we will see. It could be in some cases we will uh, give a complete solution. In some cases it may be that we will give some components. So it really depends on two things in Samadhi Pratik. One, how does the electrification story pan out in India? At what time frame? It, which, what volumes? And in that, how will we play with certain either components or in relation to the full system. Mm -hmm. And right now, this example is also seen in the three examples that Bosch has on the road through our OEMs, Bajaj Chetak, TVS, and also Nexon. So it's a mixture. It can be of any type. Uh, got it. And so just if I may try my luck again, uh, electrification is inevitable in certain categories, right? We, ha we can debate when it will happen, but it will happen for sure. I was just trying to understand, not from a one to year perspective, but over a medium to long term, whenever electrification happens, would that be beneficial from for Bosch from current perspective of content per vehicle? That was the only limited point I had. And I understand, uh, you know, there will be solutions as well as products which you will be selling. Uh, and that's True, even for the IC world. So, so just trying to think about that. I think we want to be a significant player in electrification. Okay. Yeah, that is very clear because the pedigree of our parent allows us that. You heard from our CTO. In fact, our pedigree of our parent is from two wheeler, meaning cycle. The largest number of e bikes in the world sold are Bosch e bikes, though we don't make the cycle. We give all the content which is intelligent, which is the e-drive, the computer, and the lithium-ion battery. So we want to be a significant player in electrification, and we want to take defined and calculated bets at the right time. Right now, Pratik, you are well aware, along with your colleagues, there are there is more cash burn happening than cash earn. Mm -hmm. More than that, I need not say. Great, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anuj from M3 Investment. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, thanks. Am I audible? Yes, Anuj, please go ahead. You are audible. Yeah, thank you. My question is again on the same line. Uh, although you have highlighted that it's a significant piece of action till 2030. Uh, in terms of our parent, what is the addressable market as per, you know, and this is more to Mr. Guru, uh, what, what, are, what part of electrification are we addressing today in terms of our development? Okay, I so will answer part of it and Guru, go ahead here. Yeah. Do you want to start, uh, Pramitra? No, no. Uh, uh, okay. Go ahead, Guru. So uh, let me start uh, from a global perspective. Bosch does um, a lot of um, uh, engineering and uh, product creation for uh, the electrification world. Um, we uh, are already one of the largest suppliers of uh, e-drives, uh, so the motors which uh, run the um, uh, vehicles. Uh, we are also one of the largest suppliers of uh, e-axles, uh, e which are a combination of uh, the motor plus uh, the gearbox and possibly some uh, control electronics uh, put together. Uh, we are already also the largest uh, supplier of power electronics, uh, so the uh, inverters and converters which uh, come on uh, to the vehicles. Um, we don't do batteries for sure, so that's one area which we have excluded, but everything else, uh, we are doing quite a lot of stuff. Our current acquisition uh, globally has already exceeded $20 billion. So it's uh, a lot of uh, acquisition already done on uh, electrification for Bosch. Uh, within India, we hope to replicate the same uh, portfolio 
be it in the form of uh, low voltage uh, segments for two and three wheelers, um, uh, high voltage segments for passenger cars, or uh, even higher voltage uh, segments for commercial vehicles and uh, trucks or uh, buses. So we will, we have the global portfolio. We can offer it uh, as it is. We are already working on uh, making that portfolio more affordable, more customized for Indian applications. We will continue to do that. And uh, we will uh, uh, do what is uh, required in terms of localization also to support it. What you should also recognize, I think uh, our CEO also mentioned it already, um, majority of the vehicles on the road in 2030 will already be sold in the next three or four years, and which are all going to be ICE vehicles. So uh, we will continue to support all technologies in a very, very technology agnostic way on uh, whatever it takes to have as many vehicles on the road as possible. Back to you, Samit. Thank you. Uh, Pratik, I want to only say one sentence, which I'd want to say at the beginning. Uh, you know, we have to take the reality into account that unlike Europe, or specifically even Germany, or unlike US, take specific reference of California, India will not go that way. Because most of you have been asking this question on mass electrification. Yeah, yes, in India, the TCO our CEO had said it, I have said it, I think our CTO has said it, will be with two-wheeler, three-wheeler. Because it, India will be led by TCO. And India will have to have very high levels of affordability. And battery cost will continue to remain, you know, the predominant portion of 65, 70% of the total cost of the vehicle. So keeping all that in mind, Bosch has not only invested for last 12 years on electrification, and you heard that portfolio is right from a cycle right up to uh, big heavy commercial vehicles, including Bosch has worked a lot on hydrogen. Uh, in India, it will take some time to see the traction, including the as aspect of what COVID has done to India. Sure, sure. Appreciate your reply. And one more question uh, uh, with respect to non-mobility. Uh, you know, within non-mobility, which are the areas we are seeing traction uh, uh, from a near-term perspective, say one to three years, uh, while a large part is mobility? But could you just highlight something on the non-mobility part? Thank yeah. you. So that part, I think, again, is a positive, uh, very positive story which is unfolding. Our power tools business, we are the market leader in a fragmented market. We hold uh, a very good share in our power tools. And our power tools plant at Oragatam has been rated three times the best plant in the world. So uh, basically, uh, I can tell you that power tools is doing very well. We have a very strong localization program. We are further increasing the localization program. Uh, we are going to be open to issues on uh, looking at power tools on organic, including inorganic growth. And uh, the fact is that along with power tools, our uh, business in relation to uh, you know, building technologies, uh, that we have a very strong say in the commercial area, take for example, the metros, all metros starting with the DMRC are uh, completely by Bosch, yeah? Because we have intelligent solutions. We don't sell cameras, we sell intelligent solutions where cameras are a part of trace track everything. Now, on the area of aftermarket, that has bounced back very strongly. And uh, I would say we have done pretty good in terms of our dealer outreach, in terms of uh, the end customer, uh, we are increasing, going to increase our footprint. You will see strongly uh, our Bosch car service. For example, worldwide, this uh, 2021 is the 100 years of Bosch car service. So we will increase that footprint. We will increase our footprint on diagnostics and workshop concept. And uh, we, will, we are already 
uh, improving and increasing our digital footprint. So aftermarket is doing well, and we want it to grow further. Power tools is doing well, building technologies. We are a niche player, I have to say. We are not competing at the you know middle and the bottom uh, because there's a lot of gray market in that area. And uh, of course, part train, uh, we are still investing in diesel and in gasoline like our parent. Sure, thank you. And if I, if I may push one more in, we are market leaders in e-bikes. What is the traction you're seeing in India with respect to our products? Thank you so much. Right now, it is not being looked at. I have to be very honest, Pratik. Uh, the products are currently made for the developed market. They are fantastic products. You can Google and go, go into Bosch e-bike. You'll be fascinated to see what you will see. Uh, I myself uh, drive one, and I feel very privileged to do it. Uh, it's an amazing product, but right now, in the current context, it is not yet uh, suited for India, purely from the price point of view. But who knows, in the future, maybe we can bring something which uh, will be fantastic for India and still maintain the Bosch quality and the Bosch intelligence. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. This was Anuj, but thank you. Uh, thank you, Anuj. Sorry. My mistake. Thank yeah. you. The next question is from the line of Priya Ranjan from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Priya Ranjan, you are audible. Yeah, so my question pertains to you mentioned that we have uh, grown significantly in the current year, much ahead of the industry. So uh, at, at the same time, you also said that going forward, we will be either growing uh, in line or uh, higher than the industry. So should we think that probably the uh, outperformance related to BS4 to BS6 transition is uh, in the numbers now, or uh, we can continue to see the outperformance the way we have seen in the FY21? So, uh, Pierre Ranjan, we have to take this, uh, you know, holistically. We can't take it selectively. Uh, if we look at uh, BS4 to BS6, definitely our content includes, no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, we have a good volume based on the acquisition, and uh, the mix factor definitely plays a role. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, in relation to BS6, it will pan out as to, uh, you know, 2020, 2020, year 2020 was a bit of a washout for BS6 because of COVID phase one. So now in 21-22 will be the real kick-in of the BS, uh, BS6, which we saw uh, uh, quite an extent on uh, the last quarter of the fiscal year 2021 uh, and 20-21 uh, fiscal year, uh, January-March. And going forward, yes, we will see that content uh, per vehicle improvement. Yet I also told you, cautioned you, that uh, initially we will have the challenge of the traded goods, which we are also focusing on localization. So it's a mixed bag. Any journey that you enter, you'll have to go through a mixed bag and you'll have to uh, set your whole operations right. Uh, and uh, that's what we are doing. And our restructuring and redeployment are greatly over. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. So related to that, so if uh, uh, in May, Oh, yeah, we will be coming with the next uh, next set of regulations. So our, our localization journey is in line with uh, our thinking in terms of those uh, content increase, which is going to happen with the next CAFE norms as well as RD. Yes, um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we, Bosch, uh, we have always said, maintained Priya Ranjan, that Bosch, we have always believed that A, we should have long-term reforms. B, we should not change the goalpost in football terms or cricket term, change the pitch while the game is on. C, uh, now this will be very important for India to prove to the world that India is a reliable partner. And D, our technology should catch up uh, to the requirement of the worldwide technologies, which, by the way, we have done through BS6. Now, on matters that you referred, whether CAFE, CREM4 to CREM5, uh, uh, whether BS6, uh, Stage 2, I refer to all that. We are prepared for it. And as we were prepared for four to six, which Bosch, Bosch did a complete handholding uh, from uh, conception to SOP. So we are well prepared for it. Sure, sure. 
And lastly, on your I think you, last in last call, I think you mentioned about your one plant. Uh, I think Chennai plant also where it's uh, fully automated. So where are we? I mean, in terms of automation, etc. Uh, where are we in different plants? And uh, have we some accelerated plan for industry? I mean, uh, for manufacturing 4.0 or something like that for all the plants. So uh, our CTO uh, has different avatars. He is also the you know head of a legal entity which ma makes millions of ECUs, and his plant is a completely automated plant, and yet delivers innovative and affordable products. Uh, the Chennai plant I talked about was a world beater. I said that three times in a row it was just the best power tools plant in the world. That's what I said. And uh, Industry 4.0, not only in our CTO's uh, in a company and factory, uh, which is a sister company to Bosch Limited, which, by the way, supplies to Bosch Limited. Uh, all these issues go through Bosch Limited, finally. Uh, and uh, uh, our factories, like uh, in the suburbs of Bangalore, Bindi, they are all Industry 4.0 compliant. So uh, we are using Industry 4.0 for use cases, uh, Pierre Ranjan, not, not to market. And then, of course, if someone wants to, you know, work with Bosch on that, we also work on it. And one uh, last thing, one more thing on the regulation part. Uh, when we talk about regulation, we always talk about auto side, but we hardly touch upon the regulation on stationary parts there, like engines and others. So how do you see the benefit of the future regulation from those stationary engines, marines, etc., is going to uh, play a role in our uh, growth future. We do uh, work on that part also, Priranjan. Uh, we work very closely in the off-highway sector, not just the highway sector. And we also work on what we call as the CBO sector, which takes care of all off-highway or other related uh, such what you mentioned. So. Uh, uh, we have a comprehensive regulation chart uh, over the years, not just for uh, automotive, but for entire spectrum, including stationary engines and other parts. Sure. Thank you, sir. All the best. And uh, I think it was yeah. for so, so, Malvika, we are at 514. Uh, either we stop here or you ask them the last question, one of the two. Okay, sir. We'll just take a last question now. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Naveen Matta from Mahindra Manu Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I, I wanted to know if you can share what was the uh, growth in aftermarket and uh, uh, in terms of our uh, non-auto business for the year? Yeah, the growth was not less to what we have shown as overall growth. Sorry, I, I, I missed you, sir. I said the growth was equivalent to what we have shown in the overall growth. This is for the full year? No, this is for the last quarter. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was trying to ask you for the full year, if you can give some sense on uh, the aftermarket and uh, maybe the exports also. I think you mentioned the non-mobility part in your press release. If you can help with the aftermarket and exports for FI21 over FI20. Uh, for FI20 uh, to 21 for exports, we grew at about, on a relatively low base, I have to say, at about 10%. And uh, on the aftermarket, of course, uh, because of this COVID situation, overall, the first part of the year was affected. We didn't grow too much. But the last quarter was a very impressive growth. Understood. And just one more, sir, uh, just trying to understand the impact of, uh, you know, higher import content. Uh, so when we look at it on a full year basis, uh, you know, our raw material to sales seems like almost five to 600 basis points higher compared to last year. Uh, there is also this impact of commodity cost inflation. So if one was just trying to separate the two, uh, you know, these two headwinds, uh, how would you uh, split them if you can give some sense on that? We don't give a split, but, you know, uh, you are absolutely right in saying that, you know, the commodity prices have had an impact across industry. 
freight has had an impact on industry and also what I mentioned about traded goods as three big ticket items. Yeah. And uh, going forward, based on supply chain situations, which will be extremely difficult to predict, not just for us or not just for automotive industry uh, and the global supply chains also, I think these will be challenges. So uh, we are aware of the challenges. Our CFO is responsible for the supply chain management and maybe Srini, you can have some last words. Uh, I think, uh, Somitro, you have explained it, uh, uh, most of it. Uh, as I said, uh, the traded goods or the imports uh, is where the biggest impacted. Uh, on other areas, the commodity cost increases. Yes, there is an impact, but uh, overall, we are also having some contracts where we are able to pass on uh, the commodity cost increases to our customers. So overall, yes, it's a very big focus area. Uh, and uh, this will remain a priority for us in the coming quarters. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Andamalai Jayaraj from Batliwala and Karani Securities for closing comments. We thank the boss management for taking time out for the call. Uh, we thank all the participants. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Anamalai and Malika, and thank you to all the colleagues who attended. Have a nice weekend ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf Bye. of Bhatliwala and Karani Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.